Welcome to part two of uh, this Microsoft Excel tutorial on the VLOOKUP function. Uh, in this tutorial, part two, we'll be looking at some of the things that can go wrong with a VLOOKUP function and how you can correct it and uh, some additional tricks that will make using the function a lot easier. Now, in the first part, what I explained was that when you sort the data table, it should be sorted in A to Z order or 0 to 9 order. Uh, and if you don't do that, it can cause problems for the formula. Now, as we have the formula set up here, which you can see in the formula bar, um, there is an element missing. Now, without that element, I will just show you what can go wrong if the table is missorted. And what I'll do first of all is just select the data in the data table, and I'm going to sort it the wrong way around, just to give you an illustration of how it uh, can go wrong. So, column A. I'm going to sort, and I'm going to sort in descending order. Click OK there, and just keep an eye on the um, the table at the top, the uh, the information table, and you'll see what happens. It all um, goes slightly chaotic. The code 1001 is not finding hammer at all, even though it's clearly on the data table. Um, the other codes, the 5001 and 4001 codes are not finding what they're supposed to find, which in the case of 5001 is the bolts and 4001 is nails, they're all finding hammer instead. And so clearly the function just isn't working at all. Um, the reason for that is there are two ways you can use VLOOKUP. One is to find an exact match and one is to find a close match. And we'll look at both versions of those. What, what I'm going to do first of all is look at using VLOOKUP to find an exact match. and I'm going to correct the formula uh, in this example so it begins to work properly as we want it to. Now if we just have another look at the formula, there it is. Uh, the first part is looking up the, uh, the information that we want to get from the data table or Excel will use to retrieve the information we want. The second part of the formula is obviously the data table itself and the final part is the lookup column or which column in the data table do we want the information to come back from. Now there is a fourth element which I will now add on. So if I type a comma and type the word false in there. Now what I'm going to tell Excel to do by putting false in is to find an exact match only. Uh, and if I press the enter key we'll see that we have got the right result for code 1001. Fantastic. And what I'm going to do is copy this formula down there, and we should see them all correct to bolts and nails and bolts again, which is correct. And if I put another code in there, for example, you'll see it's working. If I put 3001 in, we'll see it comes back with drill, which is correct. Now, at the moment, the price is not working as it should. We still have uh, uh, not applicable stuck in cell C2 for hammer, which we don't want, of course. And so I'm going to correct the formula there as well. So if I click on C2, go to the end of the formula, comma, type in false. I'm going to click on the little green tick there, which as I said is the same as pressing the enter key. And now we get the correct price. And if I just copy that down the column, we'll get the correct price in all the cells. So now that table is working exactly as we want. So uh, if I type in another code in there, 2001 for example, it's bringing back screws at 30 pence. Now, even though the table is not sorted correctly, it's sorted in reverse order, it will still work. Now, I can demonstrate that by sorting it in different ways. So if I go to the data table, we'll go to sort, and this time I will sort it on column B, which is the product name, and if I sort that in ascending order, so it's alphabetically sorted. Now, we have the second column, sorted A to Z, but obviously the, the the index column is completely out of order, it's not in any particular order at all, it's, it's random. But the table where our information is, is still working correctly, so that's great. So what will happen now is I can basically sort this in any particular order and our VLOOKUP will work perfectly. Next we'll look at using the paste function feature of Excel to create the VLOOKUP results. Now first of all I'm just going to delete the results have already created there because we're going to recreate those using the paste function feature. There we go. And I'm also going to do a couple of things on the data table 
the first thing is I'll just resort it numerically on the index column and the reason for that is just best practice to be honest it makes it easy to read and to update if ever you need to update the table okay so one more thing I'll do with the data table is actually give it a name now if I click in the name box at the top of the screen there and I'll type in the word hardware press enter now what that's done is actually named that range so I no longer have to type in um, A10 to C14 as the range for the lookup I can simply type in the word hardware which makes it a lot easier to not only use but also to read when you're looking at the formula okay I can just demonstrate how that works if I just click up somewhere away from the table and I click on the drop down name box click on the word hardware go straight to the table which makes it much easier to use okay with that set up we will now use the paste function feature um, first thing when you're using a paste function is click in the cell that you want the result to appear in click on the paste function button and then we need to select the function we're looking for um, it'll be in the lookup and reference category and then we scroll down to the bottom of that list and there we have V lookup explains the uh, details of the formula but as I'm going to do that for you we'll move on from that click OK we get this uh, very nice paste function box and I can just move that out of the way so you can see what's happening okay there's where our result will go uh, the first thing it's asking for is the lookup value the lookup value is in cell A2 it's basically the number we ask Excel to go and get the data from the data table so click on that you can type it in manual if you prefer the table array, well, that's the actual data table. We've already named it as hardware. Now, to access the range names, I press the F3 key on the keyboard, and that brings up the list of range names. All I do is click on hardware, click OK, and that puts it into the cell there for you. Go down to the column index number. Now, the column index number is the, row, the column that we want the data to come from. In the case of the data table, it's column 2. So let's type the number 2 in. And finally, the last part I've already looked at, I'm going to type in the word false into the range lookup, and that te tells Excel to bring me an exact match only. Click OK, and we should get the word hammer in there. That's great, so that's working. And I'm going to copy that down again, just to make sure they're all working fine. It is. Now, the nice thing about the named range is it's by default an absolute reference so you don't have to put little dollar signs around or anything and now what I'm going to do before I copy this across into the price cell is I'm going to click in the formula and just put a little dollar sign before the letter A and what that will do is that will lock column A um, now I can then copy the formula across now initially it won't work as you'll see put hammer in again because it's still looking at 1001 but it's putting column 2 of the data table and we don't want that for price we want column 3 so I'll just change the 2 for a 3 click on the tick copy that down and that's all done that's all working perfectly and I can just again maybe just change one of those codes just to demonstrate it all still works there we go that's updated fine so there we go, that's how you use paste function to create the VLOOKUP formula. That concludes part two of the VLOOKUP tutorial. Uh, in the final part we will look at some additional features you can put in to create error checking and we'll also look at how to use VLOOKUP to find close matches on searches. So hope that tutorial is useful for you. Uh, thank you very much for watching.